This is one of multiple videos teaching you network programmability using Python and GNS3. So let's continue improving or iterating our Python script for network automation. At the moment, our script looks as follows. We are configuring multiple switches by using a loop. So we're saying for n in the range 72 to 77, configure switches with IP addresses 192.168.122, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, and 77. In other words, these five Cisco switches will be configured in our topology. Now, as many times in life, there are other ways of doing things and perhaps better ways of doing things. One of the criticisms you may have of a solution like this is what happens if your switches are not using IP addresses that are sequential. You may have switches and routers mixed in this range of IP addresses, or you may only want to configure some Cisco switches and not others. So one of the things we can do is use a for loop, and in addition, we can read from a file. So I'm gonna create a file called my switches, and in here, I'm simply gonna configure the IP addresses of our switches. So as an example, on switch one, the IP address is 192.168.122.72. So that's the first switch. Control K, Control U a few times, in our topology, it's fairly simple. Our IP addresses are in that range, but it doesn't matter. You can configure any IP addresses. So this is the IP address of the first switch, and this is the IP address of the last switch. But this is a simple file, and you could configure IP addresses in any range as needed in a file like this. So I'll save that file. And then I'll just create a test. So let's call this test loop py. So what we can do here is open a file and say f equals open. And what we're going to open is a file called my switches. And what I can do is create a for loop now. So for line in f print line. And then I can close the file. So what this is gonna do is print every line in the file called my switches. So I'll save the file. So what I can do now is run the Python script and notice it's showing the output of the file. Now it puts a carriage return at the end. You can remove that if you need to. But once again, we're opening a file called my switches and for every line, in the file, we're simply printing the output of that line, and then once finished, we are closing the file. So again, I'll run the script, and notice that's the output of the script. So the last script I worked on was S1 script three, and what I'll do now is copy that to a file called switches loop file.py. Now it's important that you use names that make sense to yourself. But for now, that's fine for what we're doing. So I'll open up that file. And what we can do now is edit the script to use similar logic to what I just showed you. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is open a file called my switches. And then we're gonna say, rather than this, we're gonna say for line in f print configuring switch plus line. So that's just gonna tell us what we're currently configuring. The host is gonna be the line rather than this output. And then we can keep the script as it was. 
So I'll just format this better. According to the Python style guide, it's better to use spaces rather than tabs. So we'll do that here to be consistent with the style guide. So that all looks right. So again, the change we made is we are now opening up a file called my switches and we're using a for loop. So for each align in the file f, which is a variable that consists of my switches, we're gonna run the following code. So let's test that. So switch loop py. We ask for our username, ask for our password, and you can see that we told that it's configuring switch with that IP address. Now we're configuring another switch. Notice we do see a lot of white space. And if we scroll back, we can see the output. So it's configuring the first switch. It created VLAN 2, configuring the second switch, configuring the third switch, configuring the fourth switch, and fifth switch. Now notice it only configured a VLAN 2. So let's see where the mistake is in our code. This is the great thing about GNS3. You can safely test code and see where your mistakes are without worrying about messing up a live network. I'm gonna change this to VLAN 26. So it should configure 25 VLANs on the switches. Okay, so this is a good example of white spacing in Python. Notice I, by mistake, added these lines under the for loop here. So what the switch did was it was trying to create a single VLAN. Then the script typed end, saved the config, and then exited out of the switch. So we shouldn't have these lines under the for loop. They should be separate. Be careful with your white space. So here I made a mistake with my white space. So let's see if that's better. So it's currently configuring switch one. Let's see what happens when it gets to switch two. So we can already see in the output that that looks a lot better than we had previously. So it's configured switch two now. Show VLAN brief. And that looks a lot better. Notice we've got 25 VLANs configured on the switch. And the script shows that in the output here. It's taking a bit longer because it's saving the config of every switch. So we've added the WR command to save switch configs. So it takes longer for the script to complete in this example. But I'm a lot happier with that because switch two is showing the VLANs. And if we look at switch three, show VLAN brief. We have 25 VLANs configured and we can see the output of that configuration. Now, the great thing of using a file like this is if a switch IP address changes or we need to add another switch to the topology, it's very easy to do that. So as an example, if we change the IP address of switch two, so if I go into interface VLAN one and change the IP address to 192.168.122, and let's make it 102 as an example. We just need to change the value in our file and the script can update that switch without any problems. So if we run the script again, it's gonna configure switch one first, and then we should see it configure switch two. So it's configuring switch one at the moment. It saved the configuration. You can see it's now configuring switch two, and we can see it accessing switch two in real time. And there the configuration of the switch has been saved. So I'll break the script at this point. 
you need to be careful doing that because you can end up with half configured switches. But again, by simply changing this entry in the source file, my switches, you are able to run the script again without modifying your code in your script. This is why it's important to break up your code into what are called classes or modules and call snippets of code from other parts. Rather than trying to put everything in one program, it's better to create classes of code or groups of code that can be called by a main program. In Windows, as an example, if you think about DLLs, those are essentially executable files that are called by programs. So if you search for DLLs on your Windows computer, you'll find many of them. Those are essentially self-contained pieces of code that can be leveraged by other code. So as an example, I could write an application that leverages Word or Excel by calling the DLL. So we'll look at that kind of stuff later. But for now, I've shown you how to open a file in Python and leverage the file for making configuration changes to your network. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.